All right. This is South America. The tip of Antarctica is at the very bottom of the screen in what we call the South Pole. So flipping it over like this, it helps to illustrate a lot better. It just, it, to me, it makes it easier to visualize what I'm about to say. This place, I think, is sing singularly unique in the entire world. I haven't found another place like it. And I've looked. I think you can cross off pretty much all of the Northern Hemisphere in terms of having access to this kind of weather creation. Maybe north of Australia. That area might be the yen to this ying, I don't know, something like that. But you have on the right side, all those circles is just a satellite anomaly as far as I know. Uh, the, the Pacific is on the right-hand side. So the, the weather moves from right to left. But because of the way that South America is shaped like that, and the small crossing with at the very north there, you can see the tip of Antarctica. The continuous ocean, uh, the ice that's to the north looking at it, or to the top, I guess I should say, looking at it. And then the northern, or the topmost tip of South America, the, what would be called southern Patagonia, is very porous. That's where the glaciers formed. The mountain chain is not continuous. It's it's porous. It's basically the same as the ocean, as far as the storms are concerned. They will go there much more readily than they'll go down towards the equator. And as you can see, what's happening over my head right now, that big red blob trails back into the Atlantic. And the weather starts there. Storms do not come in ever from the Pacific. You might get upper level energy that just kind of stalls over the ocean in that nook there, in that, in that L. And that is what I think more than anything else, an earthquake factor in that area is having a upper level low pressure just stall in that L there. And then anywhere in its vicinity is, is subject to a big earthquake. I'm not saying that can't happen without it there, but when it's there, there's a much more likely chance that it will happen. But that's for an earthquake video, which I'll probably never make. But the weather starts there. For the southern hemisphere, that red blob, as you see there, will... a, a low-pressure center will f naturally form. It'll have to. It'll naturally form. The prevailing winds take it out over the ocean... Once it hits the ocean, it then turns into your classic, like, comma-shaped spiral, you know, dry air on one side, wet air on the other side, storm. That will then create its own trailing front from the Atlantic back over land, which will then create another blob, which then moves out over the Atlantic, forms another storm, and trails back. The storms that form are sucked towards the top of the screen to the the it's just the the power cable like that's where the that's where the the this power supply is and i like to think of the trailing fronts as as like extension cords just coming back and then storms plug into those and then race back to the power supply just go around and around but they start here That's not really what I wanted to talk about. This is a different satellite, different part of the world. Focus on that day-night line as it moves across. Okay? You can see the, the shadow of the sun, or the reflection of the sun there moving across. And just visualize. You can almost see it. You can really almost see it in, in, this, in this picture here. Um, it's pushing in front of it a wave. So before the sun rises, while it's still dark... You know, the sunrise... Here, let's, let's wait for it to roll around again. All right. It's nighttime. It's still dark. You're waiting for the sunrise to come. And now here it comes. Pushing ahead of it, you can see there's a darker band that looks like it's being pushed across. And it is. It's a wave that is there. And on this side, it's on the sun side. So it's being... Okay. As we look at it as a still frame halfway, 
on the night side, you can see there's, it's easy to see up towards the north. Here, let me zoom in on there. In case you're curious what's going on in the background, there's 10 very loud puppies that like to sing and talk. It's one of 10. I don't know. They're so loud. <laughs> they're not loud. They're just constant. It's 10 of them, you know? All right, so here you go. You can see there the dark stripe. On the, on the left side, the purple night side. It, the wave passes through the atmosphere before the sunrise occurs. So it's while it's still dark. Basically, the last thing that happens, like the darkest before the storm kind of thing, darkest before the dawn kind of thing, I guess, is when the wave passes overhead. And it's constantly in motion, and it's constantly moving just ahead, maybe an hour, hour and a half at most, ahead of the sunrise line. And then once the sunrise passes, now it's positive influence. Now the sun, it's the sun's domain. And then half a day later, you get this. Okay, so now the line is still moving in the same direction. Now, ahead of it, still within the day side, before the sun has... Ah, puppies. These are, for those of you that know about the, the fifth doggy, the, the male, these are fifth doggy and girl babies. Fifth doggy babies. So, for those of you that were, were kind enough to uh, throw a couple bucks or even just a couple prayers, you got puppies. <laughs> you invested in ten cute little puppies. Um, so on the sun side, before the sun sets over the horizon, so maybe it's in that bar itself, I don't know exactly, um, there's the wave. It passes through, and then it's dark. But it passes before it's dark. Right? So it passes before it's light in the sunrise, and it passes before it's dark in the sunset. Okay? Uh, let's look at it in motion again. And then I'm going to describe to you what it does to my weather here. Okay, so as it passes, in anticipation of it, then as it passes, and then as an exhale after it's gone, the atmosphere prepares itself for the transition from protons coming in to electrons going out. Right, so you have from the top down pressure coming from the sun with the, the, the mostly positive, or the net positive. And then that leaves, and following around on the dark side here, it's going from the ground up, from the water, from the land itself. It's leaving. It's going back out. And then there's a transition, a double layer, that passes around and around and around. And it's constantly in motion. And as it passes, it... What it does to me and my unique weather here, and that's what I'm curious for you out there, all of you that are interested in this kind of stuff. Pay attention. An hour and a half before, on clear sunny days and clear starry nights, it's not going to make that much of a difference. You're not going to even notice that it comes through. But when there's storms in the area, when it's been raining most of the day, and then it kind of stops before the sun sets... And then maybe it'll pick up again around 8, 9 o'clock. That's this wave passing through. So I want you to try to notice, you know, pay attention when the weather is active. Because without clouds overhead, it has nothing to interact with. There's nothing to change. It's just a smooth transition. But when there's clouds, again, depending on the differences that occur, it's going to react different. So it does have different effects based on what's... Because like I said, it, it's the weather is an, in anticipation of the wave. It knows it's coming. Resonantly, it knows it's coming because it comes every day at roughly the same time. It knows it's coming. And, you know, it. I would think that the sun side kind of separates itself based on noon and horizon anyway. Just naturally, it would follow. This, as the sun moves, I think it would just, I don't know. The weather kind of responds accordingly. Like, when, when I was back in New York, we used to get all our good storms at night. You know, nor'easters, blizzards, stuff like that. I'd wake up to feet of snow. You know, we would occasionally get the, the snow during the day, but I would say 70 or more percent of them were at night. 
But what it, it, it it's literally a wave moving through at least the cloud layer and lower layer of the atmosphere. And for example, if it hasn't rained all night, but we're supposed to get rain, we were supposed to get rain based on the models any time during the night or early morning. And it hasn't rained at night. I know it's not going to rain until after the sun comes up. It's just the way it works. So it'll wait until it passes. Or if it has been raining all night, it'll stop raining before the sun comes up. So it'll, it'll, it controls when and how the, 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 the storms themselves precipitate or don't or express themselves, I guess. You know, if there's thunder, what happened today with this blob right here, perfect example. It was supposed to rain last night. It didn't. It didn't rain at all. About two hours after the sun came up, it started raining and it rained all day. All day. We're scheduled. We're going to get flooded out. We've got like five days of rain set up here. This That blob's not going to move. It's going to form a storm that moves out as it normally does, but there's a huge high pressure off the coast there, and it's just going to block it to prevent it from getting down to the, the power supply in Antarctica. And it's going to slowly move away and as it does its trailing line is just going to stay basically where it is now we're just going to, we're scheduled to get rained out which is not great i had a tree come down two days ago and one came down today it's not not great for me right now with this weather it's getting a little hectic <laughs> living under the south atlantic anomalies not all it's cracked up to me it's getting a little hectic um so it rained all day today a couple hours after the sun came up and then it stopped it, it, an hour before the sunset, I'm telling you, I looked to the horizon and it was yellow. I could see like it was clear sky and there was sun there. And it's currently pouring over my head again. It cleared up right at sunset, stopped raining. And then kind of like it would get spurts, you know, it was kind of like stuttering back to a start. And now here it's, it's starting and I'm sure it's going to rain all night again. And that's all because of this wave that passed by. It's not continuous. The night storms are different than the day storms. The clouds may be the exact same clouds, but the energy input is different. It'll stop and it'll reset and it'll reverse itself. It'll get a full different plug-in, essentially, because of that wave as it passes by. There's different characters on different sides of the wave. Again, positive and negative. This is the nighttime side. This is coming from the ground going up. And now on this side of the wave, the double layer, I should really call it, I guess, it's coming from the top down positive. And so the, the clouds, even though they don't disperse and reform as such, the energy within them is changing character from one to the other. And there is a transition period. This wave, before and after it, there's a transition period that literally i don't know I don't, I don't know exactly how it works but it it shuts off the precipitation and then restarts it and that's my experience with this um but what's it do around you let's let's start to notice and, and pay attention and put a comment or two